Wow. 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 <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. Triple Dab Mondays. We did it again, folks. Welcome back. Triple Dab Mondays. You know how we always do Triple Dab Mondays on the podcast? Yeah. And um, this is a special episode of Find Your Beach, a very spooky episode because Rosebud left very me. Very spooky episode. <laughs> Rosebud left me. It's a hal- <laughs> Halloween tradition. And so, um, yeah, I'm like, I'm going to really scare you. Yeah. And uh, here I am in the apartment, just sitting in the dark with my one spooky lamp. Well, yeah. Um, it is a great way, if you guys haven't thought of it before, to scare your loved ones. Um, you know, if you're not married, it doesn't matter. You can just like, dip out on your roommate, let them, uh, let them think that you're not going to pay the rent this month. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. um, it's sort of a mixture of April fools and Halloween. Um, I think scare the people around you in a way that's real. I think Halloween is, is kind of just a second April fools. Like, yeah. Part, part of me just wanted to, um, get in the bath and kind of, yeah get like a fake like slit wrist and then just sit in Mm -hmm. the bath until you get back. So I look really fucked up. So you just, you know what I like to do? You just walk in buy a syringe. Uh I'm going to buy a syringe. I'm going to head down to the cellar. I'm going to lay down on the floor, right? Downstairs or upstairs? Tin foil downstairs. Uh, okay. with some tin foil and you know a little bag of sugar mm-hmm. and um and just let people think that I relapsed right there in the cellar you know I just right. let people think that I I just turned it all off I I I had one bad set mm-hmm. and that's how fragile I was you know and then when they when they start calling the cops and and the ambulance shows up and Liz is Liz finally lets out one single tear yeah that's when i'm gonna pop up and be like i made you cry (laughs) you probably feel so foolish um (laughs) i saw who you are on the inside (laughs) Uh -uh, you're real (laughs) um so so rosie you're in maine uh yeah what's it like up there just lobsters and uh moose just it's just lobsters and moose. That's all there is. Wow. Wow. Actually, lobsters the size of moose walking That'd be around scary. on two legs. That'd be yeah. pretty scary. Have you guys seen I any? I just moose? went down to the Walmart and they were all over. Crawling Inside? lobsters. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Wild. Oh. That's great. That's fantastic. What were they buying? No. What were what were the, the moose sized lobsters buying? Well, I'll get into that, but I, I feel like we should actually, <laughs> we should probably do an intro, you know? No. Like, welcome back to the podcast, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. No, nope, um, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't think we should do it. Maybe like a, like a, hey, thank you so much for leaving a review on iTunes. Uh, if you haven't had a chance yet, please head over to iTunes, leave us a review. Um, we got big things in the works, you mm-hmm. know, Andy's Andy just got a first cut of his album, sent it out with edits. My album is now streaming on Spotify until November 5th. Uh, you can download the link in any of my social media, uh, platforms to, if you want to download Spotify, if not, you can wait until November 5th and just download the album and have it, you know, you can buy the album, which would be great too. Um, I don't like any of this. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's a bummer, but it has to be done. Fine. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Do you, do you want to read, do you want to read some comments or uh, some reviews just to. No, because we don't have any new ones. So that's why I was saying, guys, Uh, if you haven't left a review, head over to iTunes, leave us one. Cause we're getting close to fucking. Forget We passed 300 baby. Oh shit. Look at us. We're at 301 zo. 
We're like when Pinocchio was like, I'm a real life kid. You know? Yeah. Exactly like that. It's exactly like that. There's no flaw in that analogy at, at all. A lot and of people are saying one, that. Get your vision checked. Okay, because you're um, wrong. Speaking of real life boys, I would like to welcome some of our new patrons, if that's all right. Okay, but make it quick because I've I've been getting some real complaints about this on the on the uh, YouTube. Is that true? Yeah, somebody was like, "It's too many names." Oh God! All right, we'll play the song that goes with it. Da 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 da. Welcome to the beans. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows that song. Uh, well, pull up a a a lounge chair and a fucking blanket and welcome to the beach joe de vivo uh, john dayborn michael elias whoa uh, so many menzos lars zellender bruce hamilton brie whoa. says yeah we got the men are finally showing up and i'm here for it sis um <laughs> We got we got some boys. We got some boys in this house. You know, there's that song. There's some hoes in there's this house. There's some boys in 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 this house. Okay. All right. You don't have to dance. I'm just no one wants to see it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Stop. Don't show them how the sausage is made. <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty good sausage. Um yeah, so Rosie, you're in Maine. You wanted you wanted to do this intro, and now we're back to the matter at hand. Um, yeah. I'm assuming your mom is taking you on no less than three hikes already. It's 3 p.m., so that's at least three hikes. You know, actually, we have not hiked, but we've cried twice, once in a Walmart. Um, you know, if you've been listening to the pod for some time, you know that Nanny B is she's a fan of letting the waterworks go. She loves to loves to leak out of her eyeballs. And uh doesn't matter where she is, doesn't matter if she's in the middle of uh an aisle um mm -hmm. in Walmart and Mouse mm -hmm. is deciding to take a shit in the middle of her crying. Um, you know, it doesn't matter, she'll do yeah. it. And yeah. mouse mouse did shit in the Walmart this morning. I should make that clear. That wasn't a joke. My dog shit in the Walmart. What but I you love know, it, it, well, what if I love you're about shit mouse, in a public place, I think you should shit in a Walmart. That's fine. Yeah. Well, well, one thing I love about mouse is that um, she kind of it's it's like a bucket list situation, almost like a scavenger hunt. She's like, where can I shit? Like every kind of indoor scenario. Like she's got a little checkbox. Plane twice, yeah. uh, Walmart, yeah. uh, uh, Morton Williams. Yeah, loves be, to shit on a plane. Loves to shit on a plane. You know, snakes on a plane, it's shits on a plane with Mouse, starring Mouse. And, and there are two two versions of it. There's the, the first one and then the sequel. She gets that from me because uh, I, I love a shit on a plane. I feel like a sky king when I shit on a plane, you know? <laughs> like I'm like I'm so <laughs> special. Sky king. Yeah, I'm so special. I have to go 30,000 feet in the air to shit. Yeah. But also usually when I'm on a plane, I'm on Klonopin. So it's also like kind of a mixture of just riding that, you know? Side effects. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are a special boy and you deserve a special place to poop. Um, okay. man, I, I'm so excited about the, we, you guys, I finally connived my way into having a spin bike in the house and it's just, it's miraculous. Today I watched soccer while spinning. It was, did a full 45 minute spin. I'm just yeah, I'm living that 1% life. I know. And you know what else I found? I found some YouTube movies videos where you can you can that sounds like porn you can do the spin thing the spin bike and you can watch a youtube video of a bike going through like the french alps or like through the desert and the whole time they're like 
talking you through it. They're like, all right, here comes a hill. Let's go. And then um, they're like, you know, that doesn't feel real. No, but here's the cool thing. They're like, give us your social security number and your bank routing number. And just here comes another hill. And then, all right, um, what's your mom's maiden name? Keep on working, everybody. You know, Uh huh. so it's like by the end, they really get to know you. Yeah, it's a it's an intimate class. And that's my favorite kind of worker at the scenario, you know. A class where I can give out all my personal information so that by the end, like we're not falling out of touch. No. And also, you know, I'm pretty lonely since you left me. I've been kind of I don't sleep in our marital bed when you're gone. We know that's taboo. And um, I mean, let's hope that it becomes a marital bed again. But until then, I'm just on the couch to keep it extra depressing. Um, Kind of tissues everywhere. Just empty containers of ice cream and Diet Coke. Ooh, I'm going to buy some. Yeah, you just started jerking off with like conditioner. Just to make it extra sad. Your conditioner, the Moroccan oil. Yeah. 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 Moroccan oil. Great product. Mm -hmm. Great product placement. Um, Speaking of uh, products, I do want to mention that the New York Times came out with an article that uh, several people have sent to me um, that said that mozzarella sticks are having a moment. Saw this. Now? I saw this. You saw this? Yeah, Did someone send it to you? No, babe, I watch your stories occasionally, you know? Occasionally I'll check in to see what see what you're up to, see what the youth are doing. Well, they're saying that Americans' renewed desire for the nostalgic comfort food may be partly the result of enduring a pandemic. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? The dishes has had a cultural resurgence. It makes appearances on high-end restaurant menus and viral cooking videos driven perhaps by Americans' desire for nostalgic comfort food during a pandemic or simply the pleasant aesthetics, which, I mean, we've been doing this. We made a mozzarella stick video. Did we ever put that out? We put that on the Patreon, right? The mozzarella yeah. stick video, the Cheetos, hot Cheetos mozzarella sticks. Yeah, the most disgusting were they just- kind of dish I've ever made. Yeah, it was really a failure on our parts. We really fucked that up. We should actually do a, a round two, see if we can get this right. Yeah, we should try it again. But, but yeah, they're saying it's having a resurgence. And to me, I'm I'm just upset because I feel like I've been saying that mozzarella sticks are the best for a long time. I know you have. A long time. And you've been saying that I'm not classy because I think that. And I just want to make it clear that I am. I am classy. You're like I'm a classy bitch. You're Cleveland classy, you know. You're you're Pittsburgh classy, you know. But I'm New York classy as hell. New York classy. I I don't know if you could cut the bar. You don't have a long enough jacket. You don't have a bag that has fluffy stuff on it. You know, things that you got to work up to. But it's cute. It's cute that you like mozzarella sticks. I think that's great, babe. You know what? You are a coastal elite, Andy, and it's showing. Look at my shoulder. I could probably showing. I could cut glass with this thing. Anyways. Yeah. um, I I don't know if that's really something you want to go for as a man. Sharp shoulders. But, um, you know, sort of like Christian Bale and the machinist. Is that the name of the? Yeah, that's the look I'm going for, actually. I've stopped eating, mm-hmm. um, and I just exercise and kind of just sweat all this weight off. I'm down to 186. Yeah. Um, I'd like to get down to 120. Yeah, 120, I think, is healthy. So I got 66 pounds to go, but okay, it's a journey. It's a journey, and I'm excited to get there, you know? Yeah, goals, baby, goals. Um. I do want to announce, well, I have some exciting news and it's just for myself. Uh, I deleted Facebook this morning and that felt great. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've had um, Facebook since 2003 and 
I probably had a fan page since 2017. And um, what inspired this? Uh, just seeing all the negative press about Facebook lately and being like, why, why do I have a Facebook page? And also um, just trying to, you know, streamline life, less distractions, less things to think about. I mean, I don't know anybody that fucking uses Facebook. I know. I just, I wanted to get rid of it. I wanted it gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of us want to hang on to those parts of our past that are, that were mistakes, you know, just to remember them. But I, I respect that decision. I think it's, there's, there's how do you feel? Lighter, you know, but that's also because I haven't eaten for a few days. And so <laughs> kind of the combination of the two is, you know. Yeah, that'll do it. Really got me going. Yeah, that'll do it. So. But do you feel like, uh, like when you did it, were you like, what were your reservations? Did you have any reservations about it? Well, you know, some people still message to do booking on there. That's like, uh, you know, people, people right. will message me for shows on there and occasionally like, um, somebody in Indonesia who has like a picture of a girl in like a bikini will be like. Hey, click this link, you know, I, I to see yeah. all my, see all my pics and cams. Um, yeah. And I didn't want to lose those, but. Um, yeah. Those are, I mean, just for sentimental reasons, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. kind of like having a, a little time capsule, but, mm -hmm. but uh, honestly, I think, uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to streamline. Sometimes, listen, you're a grown man. It's time to bury your time capsule full of Indonesian titties mm -hmm. and and move on with your life. Well, you know, just so you know, these are not Indonesian titties. This is probably an Indonesian man whose profile uh -huh. pick is a American or British woman. You know, just a kind of a generic um, sexy gal. And they just they you know, they're trying to. They're trying to honeypot me. What does that mean? It's like an old uh, spy term where like they'd send like a sexy woman into a spy scenario. And then the spy would be like, oh, whoa, 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 you know, like, and then, um, <laughs> you know, like that. Right. And um, yeah, that's probably why I could never be a spy. Because, um, you know, like when you get home from milkers, yeah, when you get home from work, a lot of days I'll be, you know, trying to write perfect jokes and um, you'll walk in the door and I'll go <laughs> like that. And um, <laughs> yeah, I know how you do that all the time. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. like a, it's a giveaway. It's just like a straight up Basically giveaway. Basically it. It's like a doorbell, but for after you have already come in the house. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, titty man. doorbell. Yeah. You no, know, the titties are in. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Exactly. And it's cute. It's romantic. It makes me feel um, valued. Yes. I knew that. For my wit. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, what I can add to a conversation. Um, yesterday, you you drove like, I don't know, eight, nine hours. And then um, yeah, I did. you're in Maine. Uh, we're sending Charlie back to summer camp. Um, but this time it's winter camp. It's kind of more of a Siberia. You cross Stalin the wrong way. Um, kind of yeah. uh, exile. Um, Charlie said well, when we brought Charlie back from New York, he was very depressed. He, he was threatening suicide. He, uh, oftentimes I'd find him in the middle of the living room with a little, uh, shiv that he made out of a stick that he found. Yeah. And I'd be like, what are you doing with that? And he'd be like, you know what I'm doing with it. <laughs> and I'd be like, what? He'd be like, you know what, what I'm going to do with this. Yeah. A lot of Go times. A lot of times I'd come into the, to the house after like a night of shows and Charlie would be kind of like, right as I opened the door, I'd see Charlie at the door and he'd have like a little, yeah. he'd have a monocle on 
and a flashlight in his mouth. And he'd be kind of right. like with his claws trying to get the door open. Yeah. And I'd be like, Charlie, what's up? And he'd go, you know what fucking time it is. And then I'd be like, no, I mean, yes, I do know what time it is, but I feel like that's more of a kind of sort of an innuendo or something yeah, like, like a rhetorical and um yeah then he'd just go back to reading on his bed and uh i don't know right I, I never fell for it well i've gotten pretty worried about him you know because it's like we have uh some tour dates coming up we're gonna mm -hmm. be on the road more and um i just was like if i also here's the other thing every time we put charlie in daycare like over the weekend, they'd send us pictures of the dogs over the weekend. And uh, every picture was just Charlie actually slamming his head into a pipe. Yeah, it would just be like kind of a blur and then like a spat, like a splash of blood and just the pipe, yeah. you know, just. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was very it was upsetting to see. Um, it, it almost looked like they were torturing him. But when I asked follow-up questions, because obviously I would, I'm a good mom. I was like, what's going on? Why is, why is there uh, blood everywhere? Yeah. And they'd say, look, we haven't touched him. He's, he won't stop banging his head into pipes. He's suicidal. And so I just thought, I thought, all right, let's take Charlie to a place uh, where he'll be happy at my mom's. Up in Maine saying. with a big, a big yard, and uh, and other dogs that are chill that don't try to climb into his mouth all the time. <laughs> um, and um, and at least keep him here until I'm done touring, which is uh, probably should be by the end of the winter. Twenty twenty five, probably. Of, it's gonna be. Um, He's sort of long-term daycare at my mom's place right now. Is he in the room with out. you? No, that's my suitcase. I thought it was Charlie, but it's my suitcase. Do you think because we're not going to see Charlie for, I don't know, an indefinite amount of time, at least till Christmas, uh, do you think we could get a little Hal sesh for the, for the, the rider dies? Yeah, definitely. By the end of this episode, for sure. Okay, good. Absolutely. Um, um, but I wanted, I wanted to, uh, get into some bad advice questions. Cause we have some that have like built up because we haven't done any in a while. And, um, you're making a face, you're making a face that is uncomfortable to look at. You look like a flounder right now. And, um, I'm just going to avoid looking at you cause it's upsetting me. Uh, you guys, if you want to text us your bad advice questions, it's 917-540-8395. Thank you all for uh, sending in your questions. It's been great to, to hear them and to, to chat with you guys individually. It's fun. Um, okay, so here's, here's a bad advice question. Hey, y'all, my... Oh, wait, that's... how. Hey, bad advice. How do I look... How do I look my father in the eye after he texted me two pictures of his bare ass to show me he has hives? Um, male or female? Female. I, I don't know. How that do I look my father in the eye after he texted me two pictures of his bare ass to show me his hives? Well, I mean, you've already looked into his brown eye. And, um, that's a spiritual, yeah. that's a spiritual thing. So, I mean, you've, you've already I feel like looking over. someone in the eye when you've seen them in their hole, uh, it's pretty easy. You know, you've seen yeah. everything. I think this is, I mean, as long as you couldn't see his turkey neck balls, uh, then I think you're, I think you're in good shape. I mean, no line has been crossed. We all know that butts are not, uh, really like a sexual organ. They're more of a funny um kind of goofy you know that's a funny thing a lot of times yeah um a lot of times when I'm on like a city bus I'll take my pants down and I'll put it up against the window as we're passing a school bus just kind of like to give the kids kind of like a you know just a highlight of their day and just a little something to remember when they're 20 
you know, something to remember and to tell their friends about this wild thing happened. It was 20 years ago, but wow, what a crazy day. I saw Andy Haynes on a bus. And I saw his whole bare ass. I don't even think, you know, it's probably just seeing me that's going to get them thrilled, you know, and then my butt's like a kind of just a a bonus cherry on the top. Yeah. It's like a, a pandemic, a pandemic, uh, stimulus check. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's what that was. You know, you see Andy, you're like, that's the face of death. And you see his ass and you're like, Oh, that's a stimmy. <laughs> the face of death. <laughs> I was trying to make it work with the pandemic. Oh, yeah, comparison. yeah. Um, um, I just remembered that when I was a kid, like middle school, um, I, I would take a bus to school. and um, <clears throat> You just remembered that? No, this is part of the bus ride. I would rem- I remember that there was this one turn we would make on the school bus every day on the way home and you would we would yeah. pass a porn shop and the windows were all covered but like the top of the window was not and so as we passed the porn shop we would all stand up and just be like ah, like looking into the sun Oh that's the best that's yeah. the best when you when you're on the school bus and you pass an adult an adult merchandise place. Yeah. Whether it's whether it's a porn shop or a head shop or somewhere to buy liquor, you know, yeah. like you pass those adult places, those forbidden little forget me not places. Oh man. And forget me not. That's kind of a weird forget me not used to be kind of a romantic kind of gesture. No, it's it's really, but it's, I say, forget me not. Cause you always know it's there. Okay. You're not allowed in it, but you're not going to forget that it's there. No, you won't. You will not forget that. You will not forget that for a second. Um, right. Um, but also you, here's the, to get back to this, uh, this ridiculous question, um, you know, bad advice. You, your dad made you with his sperm. You came out of his dick and he's been looking you in the eyes like you're a whole other individual. Yeah. So I think you owe him, you owe him the same, you know, you are one. As somebody who saw their dad's ass and dick very recently, I can tell you, you got off light. You know, you got off, you got off pretty light. And we don't even know yeah. if you're in the medical profession then, you know, all bets are off. He can show you anything. That's the law, you know? Yeah. If you you are in the medical profession, you're going to get pictures of rashes from your family. Um, Real quick thing I just thought of uh, for fun. If uh, any um, of our listeners, the first person to guess what media is paused in the background of Rose Bud's shot, um, I will send you a ten dollar uh, Starbucks gift card. So that's. Do you know what it is? No, I don't. I don't want you to tell me either till after we're done recording because it'll be. Oh, okay. Is it an easy one? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll have to see. I have no idea what it is right now. It's the first season of a very popular show. Don't tell us any more. We can't know. Okay. Okay. Um, um, so you're going to come back tomorrow still? Yeah. Can we, but can we figure, I wanted to keep doing bad advice. Oh, there's more, there's more bad advice. Yeah. I told you they're, they've, they've been piling up. Honestly, I, don't, I, I listen to very little of what you say. So I just want to. Okay. Well, that's good. That's a good sign for our marriage. Um, okay. Uh, that hurt my feelings. Where is it? Hold on. Can you keep talking? Well, I think you look very pretty and uh, you got a nice set of jugs and your butt's good and um, you're also My very successful. Good. Your butt's My great. butt's good. <laughs> your butt's fine. <laughs> but you're very successful. Your butt's, 
that's like whatever, but it's not the worst. All right. Here's a, this is a first time writer for bad advice. Hey, Rosebud and Andy, I have a bad advice question. I'm starting my podcast. Today's my first episode. Any advice on how to make this podcast the best one ever? Well, that's uh, an interesting approach. Well, I think uh, we, we're not going to mention your podcast because we don't want to see you succeed. But I think... Yeah, because secretly we do want it to fail. But So here's our bad advice. Um, um, lots, of, you, lots of silences. Lots of long um, silences. And then um, you're going to want to uh, throw in some racist impressions. Mm-hmm. Well, that'll actually probably... That'll, that'll boost your number, so don't do that. Um, that'll... Uh-huh. Get into an argument that's like awkward with your co-hosts, you know, like where you guys kind of like both clam up and you're like, it's fine. No, it's fine. Just we'll keep recording. It's fine. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't have a co-host, get into that same argument with yourself. Yeah. Also, chew into the microphone. Yeah, definitely eat while you're podcasting. Um, Something crunchy is kind of best. So we can kind of we can hear you um what's that called i want to hear you digesting yeah um oh definitely don't work on your sound quality um don't don't think about sound if if there's a video component don't think about light don't think about framing yeah people like it rough you know yeah um all right we got a new one i think we got that's pretty much everything right i mean i don't want to i don't want to blow over that but like I do want to wish her luck and say that I hope that your podcast is successful and that you have a ton of fun doing it. And uh, I think that's the most important thing, right? We have fun doing this podcast. Yeah. Oh God, Jesus Christ. Can you, (laughs) I mean, can you, I have faked it for you so many times. Oh, come on. Come on. The least you can do is return the favor. I have a great time doing our podcast. Do you? Yeah, of course. I love it. Okay. The way you said that, mm, felt like you had a gun to your back. I'm um, sorry. I'm super tired from my spin class, you know? Yeah. It's got to be hard to spin and give out all that personal information, you know, looking it up, reading the yeah. passport number. No, I have it memorized. Um, here, I'll tell That's everybody. Actually, Andy's, dear, Andy's dream is doing a spin class while doing paperwork. Yeah. Oh, believe me, I actually found out that the handlebars can uh my I can put my laptop on the handlebars. So yeah, it's it's on, baby. You're gonna get an OB subscription. Mm-hmm. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um oh I did an OB class this morning with Mary Stewart. Woo! Oh my god, that shit will fuck you up. Is she leaving today? It's hard. She's leaving tomorrow. It doesn't matter, Andy. That's not the point of the story. Why do you why do you always go to travel details? I need to know. I'm talking about a story, like oh, something okay. interesting. And you're like, what time will be she, will she be leaving tomorrow? What kind of class? What was is it? that? She, it was a <laughs> it was a class. It was like a strengthening class, like okay. a circuit training class. And you really sweated and, it out. Oh my God. Oh, I put on ankle weights. My ass is already sore. And, and then I stretched afterwards and I was like, I think I'm done. I think that's it. If you work out more than 20 minutes a day, like you're insane to do anything else. Yeah. Like all you need is 20 minutes. If you are somebody who works out 45 minutes every other day, like relax. It's a pandemic. We, there's, we have five years left. We do me a favor. Mm. Just can you take the underwear that you wore during that workout and put them in like a Ziploc bag and just give them to me? Yeah, absolutely. You fucking freak. I love you. (laughs) Um, All right. Next question. Hey, guys, I've been dating this woman recently, and I think she's the love of my life. Gross. Everything has been progressing really well. Would love your advice on how to lock it down. Additionally, I am 22 and definitely have everything figured out. Um, well, I think you should definitely propose in, in a grand gesture, you know, like uh, hire a like a quintet. Don't even go quartet, go quintet. 
And, yeah. you know, uh, like we, we, we all saw what, uh, Travis, what's his name did for, uh, Courtney, something like that on yeah. the beach, um, kind of right. a, a gothic heart kind of situation. Um, yeah. But do it in a way more public place than Malibu, you know, do it in a, like an outdoor yeah. mall, like an outdoor mall, quintet, heart made of roses. Outdoor mall is great. Yeah. If you could just get a heart made of roses, like the kind that goes up on a stand, like you would have at a funeral, they probably like, you know, I mean, what are they going to do with those roses? They're not taking them home from the funeral. So you could just like, just be like, Hey, are you guys done? Yeah, just go to a, go to a cemetery or a funeral home and just start taking those. Yeah, I mean cemeteries, they got flowers. I'll tell you that. They got flowers everywhere. So you just go one sweep through a cemetery, you got yourself a bouquet. When I die, I just thought of something. Um when I die, can you like put a lot of uh like LGBT paraphernalia around the costume the co- coffin and stuff just to kind of confuse people? You know, just like where people are like, it's Andy, was Andy? And then just don't say anything about it. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, I feel like we're leading that way with the, your recent posting. Patterns, oh, yeah. You know, because I, cause I kissed a friend. Because I kissed a friend. Cause you, just because I kissed, cause a friend. kissed a friend on the mouth. Yeah, who yeah. cares? Uh, kissed a friend on the mouth, uh, you know, on a romantic walk, looking at the fall leaves. And uh, and then posted yourself in a dress today. So I think whatever's going on, you are supporting the LGBTQ community. Oh, look at Ziggy in the background. Oh, Ziggy has the same Halloween costume as Mouse, which is a slutty fish. Oh, that's great. Now, I want to say something. Yeah. I, I, I it, nothing's changed about me. Nothing's different. It's just that I'm kind of seeing where this industry is going. I'd like to be on euphoria. And I know that there's some things that I maybe have to do, you know, like you occasionally will get a Botox shot. Sometimes I'll kiss a guy, you know, like those are the things that we got to do to work in this yeah. industry. I got hair transplants. I'm getting lean, you know, like it's, mm-hmm. I'm just trying mm-hmm. to work. That's all. I'm just yeah. trying to work. Let me tell you something. Mystery is the last great commodity. So thank you. Thank you. You just keep you just keep your sexuality as vague as possible. And we're in business, baby. Yeah. Um. So yeah, definitely propose to this uh, love of your life, and you know, get her pregnant and keep it in. Get her pregnant. Follow the life script. Get married. Have babies. Die. You know. Yeah. That's, that's the, how you do it. That's, and and 22 isn't too early to lock it down. You know, that's a perfect time. I think that people did that a lot around the turn of the century. And if you have some yeah. kind of horse drawn wagon and you have like a uh, what's that called? A, a An old timey disease like polio and a ream of a ream of, uh, of, of fabric, you know, to make your guys's clothes from. And you can just kind of set off mm-hmm. head head west, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of land left back. in Montana, Wyoming, Utah. You know, you can go out there. You can set up shop. Just settle. Yeah. Just settle like the settlers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good luck to you, buddy. Yeah. Um, we wish you luck. I think you're going to do great. Um, we have. Uh, OK, here's here's. Hi, Rosebud and Andy. I need advice on some hooking up. Should I take a break from random sex to pursue a relationship? I haven't had a relationship for four years now, and it seems like I'm doing okay for now. But my family wants me to be stable with someone since I'm now 24. Jesus, thanks. And keep Andy on a short leash. She could see that I'm on my glow up. That's why she said that. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a man, but... Um, his family yeah, wants I think he's into his you. family wants to lock it down and he's 24. Are our listeners all writing in from Mormon hotspots or possibly like very uh devout Muslim countries? Like what's going on with this young lock it down? Andy, trend? Andy, let me tell you something. This is great. There's a lot of people 
who don't believe in marriage anymore. Yeah. If we're, if our listeners are into marriage, I'll take it. Yeah, that's All true. Right? I'll take it. But what they don't understand is that we both got married following a long string of failed relationships and, uh, and failed marriages and not failed, but you know, they ended, that doesn't make them a failure, but you learn. It was things. a failure. And it, then, was a, it was a seven month marriage. That's, that's kind of an L you put that as an L on the board. <laughs> yeah, that's not great it's not great but you know at least you got married yeah it's something it's a sure. notch in the belt sure anyway uh there's all these people that are just they're just living their lives and sitting out there yeah they're throwing around pussy and dicks and everything in between just you know and being like 30 something and having like a roommate and then they just have casual relationships left and right. And then like, just really like all of their intimacies with like another arrested development friend, you know, and I don't mean the yeah. show. I mean, like you're, you're stuck at the idea of being 25 and you're 34. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes you're stuck with just arrested development, the show. Uh, sometimes that's the only thing a in your life. A popular show for people that fit in this kind of bracket. Yeah. So I think um, I'll take it if we got listeners that actually want a real relationship. You know, not that not that you have to be married for it to be a real relationship or even that you have to be. Uh, uh, in God's eyes, yes. In God's eyes, yes, you do have to make a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that uh, this person says that they're doing okay for now, but that their family wants them to be stable with someone. And I'm like, that's not a reason to, I, I think that's a dumb reason to get, to do anything in your life is if your family wants you to, that's, that's a, that's a bad sign. The only way if that you're makes doing sense. something because your family wants you to, it's like, no. Yeah. Unless you're in a Royal family, don't worry about what your family wants for you. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. You ran out. I was thinking, I was, I was thinking about this. Um, no, I didn't run out of questions. We got some more. And uh, guys, if you want to write us uh, your bad advice questions at 917-540-8395. And if you are somebody who is not in a relationship and is in like one of these polyamorous things that me and Andy keep making fun of, please write to us. Write, write to us and tell us everything. Let us know what we're missing out on. Yeah. You know, tell us, tell us the details of your sexual escapades. Yeah. We're I gonna do. read them and we're gonna come. I do so, want to know what it's like to like there's people, you know, who like take pleasure in uh watching their partner get pleasure. And I don't really uh I mean, it's not that I can't intellectually understand it, but from an emotional sense, it's gross to me. Um, yeah. But I'd love to know people's if takes. If I on laugh, it. Andy throws up a little bit. If yeah, I'm I don't, just laughing, I don't. If if you laugh at another man's jokes, mm -hmm. I hold my hand over the stove. That's how mad I get. I just turn on the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He just sits there in his hand, his hand and his face shake. And he, he looks like a toddler holding his breath. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Explain it to us. Explain to us how emotionally that that's like possible. Cause I know that, I mean, these people can't be lying about it. If it's something that works for them, then, but I'm just curious how that works, you know? Because yeah. for me, the idea of uh, of uh, another woman hitting on Andy even makes me want to uh, slash her tires, you know, and set her house on fire. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anyways, jealousy is sort of old school now. People look at it and they go, um, oh, you're jealous. You're toxic. You're a toxic person. You don't have any self-esteem. <laughs> But for me, I feel like someone that allows their 
significant other to fuck someone else is I'm like, well, you don't have any self-esteem. <laughs> like to me, that seems like someone with no self-esteem. I also think it's like, so a, it's just like a sign of like kind of immaturity. Like you don't really want to be in a relationship. You want to like, you want everything. And I don't think. Yeah. You know. It's kind of like, a, it's part of our culture, which is like now that you can just have everything whenever you want it. And if you don't want it, you can just like get rid of it. You, like it's, you just discard people and things very quickly without any sort of, uh, I don't know. It's like, you hear it all the time. People are like, cut people out of your life that are toxic. And, and it's like, on the one hand, yes, you should do that. But on the other hand, I'm like, you hear it so much. And I'm like, I wonder if we're swinging so far in the opposite direction that we don't really know how to navigate conflict anymore. Anyway, sorry to get sincere. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, well, that's that's 50 cents in the sincere jar for, from you. Um, yeah. So we said do we'd have, do it. Do you have any bad... Ad- sorry, what? Oh, it sounds like you're wrapping up. So I was going to say... Um, Maybe we should do that house session that we talked about. No, I wanted to do this uh, last question. Oh, right, okay. We have one more. Um, all right. This is this is a this is a big one. Hi, I could use some bad advice. I'm 25 and I had an abortion last week and I feel totally fine about it. Am I insane? And um, my answer to that is, no, you're not insane at all. I, the same thing happened to me when I was 27 and I almost felt like it didn't happen to me. I almost, I was like, I felt like this is just something that I, I chose to do this and it made more sense than the alternative. And, you know, there's a lot of things that like, we see in the media and, and we hear from other people and it's like, there's a script that goes along with things like this happening where you're supposed to be sad or you're supposed to feel a certain way. And I, to me, I'm like, honestly, you should feel totally fine about it. If you are fine with it, then you should be fine with it. And that's how, that's how I see it. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. First of all, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, if you got it done in Texas, that's a different thing. I mean, cause that's obviously a sort of a home. That's a D DIY sort of situation. And, and I don't know how you'd feel fine about it, but cause you probably got some leftover um, debris in there. Grody. But if you got um, it in any other state, then you're fine. Well, there's actually a lot of states now where you can't get abortions. Um, but um, I do think that. Is that true? Well, they made it really hard in a lot of states. Like there's like one place in the whole state you can get it and you have to go through like a bunch of like, you know, hoops and ladders to to get the abortion. Um, Which is hard because you're pregnant and tired. Yeah. And the, the, the hoops aren't big and they're kind of high hoops up. And ladders isn't. Hoops and ladders is not a game for a pregnant lady. No, it's not. Um, but, you know, I I think that uh, I don't think abortion is like a non-event, you know? Like, I think that, you know, if uh, I heard the, the average Russian woman, I, I don't, this statistic could be completely like uh, false, but I heard this back in the day was that the average Russian woman gets 16 abortions in her lifetime. And that seems excessive. I think, you know, when you kind of, when you kind of get up around three, you should probably like uh, kind of question your um, birth control methods, possibly maybe time to invest in the old IUD, but uh, otherwise, you know, it's, uh, it's on you. Good for you, babe. Good for you to uh, good for you to have this and know you shouldn't feel anything other than whatever you're feeling. That's the right thing to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Usually if you're like, if you feel insane for feeling any kind of way, that's usually 
somebody else's voice telling you that you're insane, which is for me reason enough to ignore it. Um, okay. So that's, that's it. That's all I got for bad advice, but you guys, thank you so much for writing in and sending us your bad advice questions. Keep it, keep them coming. 917-540-8395. Uh, you can't leave voicemails yet. I'm trying to, I'm working on that. I'm working on a way for people to send us voicemails, but you can also, you can send us videos to, um, you know, if you want to send like videos to either of our Instagram or to the, uh, FYB pod. Instagram. What is you can it? Also, find your beach pod. FYB pod. I think it's F. No, yeah, it is Find it's Your Beach. Find, it's just it's Find it's Your just Beach find pod. Your and then um, yeah. So send send us you can videos also, to Find Your Beach pod. You can send us a voice memo to the email too, because we'd love to be able to play your your bad advice question. That'd be great to hear hear yeah. some other voices. Um, My email is fybpod at gmail dot com. Do you want to plug anything, babe? Yeah, I have some uh, road dates coming up. My tour, I'm putting together a 2022 tour and we're adding dates with each week. So just keep checking my website, rosebudbaker.com for tour dates. And um, we, I know that we're coming to Texas. Me and Andy are coming to Texas. We're going to do a Texas run. So check on those dates if you're in Texas, the great state of Texas. Um, Andy, do you have anything? Um, yeah, n- this weekend I will be at the, uh, Philly punchline, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And then, uh, at the end of the month, I will be at uh, skyline comedy club in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, Rosebud and I will be, um, headlining new year's Eve at last comedy club in Seattle. And then, um, other stuff in the works. I got some other dates in there. Just look at my calendar. Go to imandyhaines.com and uh, don't message me on Facebook. Because he's off of there. I'm off. And um, one one more thing, just want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, check out the special Whiskey Fists on Comedy Central's YouTube page. Um, the album is coming out on November 5th. It'll be available on Spotify and iTunes and all that jazz. So buy the album when it comes out. Um, tell your friends about it. Tell your family. I Tell forgot to my album, uh, the coward of Gramercy will be out Friday, November 26th. So, Oh, hell yeah. So that's coming up. Double trouble, double trouble, double trouble, baby. I just sounded like Theo Vaughn. Um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Thank you for tuning in every week. We love you. Thanks for being a part of our lives. And uh, we will see you next week. Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Let me get Charlie. Hold on. We got a house sesh for you. Yeah, we got to do a final house sesh. Pause the recording. Pause the recording. Okay, I'm pausing it. You guys, I'm not pausing it. I'm I'm keeping it going. I'm going to keep on talking because I don't want to have to edit this. And I think that that's, I think that's solid. Ready? Ready? You couldn't hear him because it's on your voice, your earphones. You can't hear that? <laughs> no, not at all. But that's okay. People got the uh, people got the point, you know. I'll edit it out then. I put a I put a clean ending on the end. All right. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.